Welcome chess players to our next installment of our online chess club. I'm going to show you a special game today played by Paul Morphy, who you know, uh, against Schroofer. This game was played in 1859. And in this game, you're going to see a lot of the tactics that we've talked about before. You're going to see forks and threats of forks, and also the way Paul Morphy lines up his pieces, his, his uh, long range pieces that move in a straight line, lines them up uh, along uh, files and diagonals in order to do some of the tactics that we've talked about, discovered check, pins, and so forth. So I want you to see how he uses the tactics that we've talked about to make his opponent do things that they wouldn't necessarily want to do. This game was played in 1859, which is just after, about a year after the Night at the Opera game that we've talked about before. This game is called the Smother of Invention, and we'll talk about why it's called the Smother of Invention at the very end. You'll be able to see why. Now, Paul Morphy is playing the white pieces. Schufer is playing the black pieces. Paul Morphy, as many of you might anticipate, starts his game by playing e4, which Bobby Fischer says is best by test. This pawn, uh, this move puts a pawn in the center and opens up the diagonals for the queen and the bishop. Black also comes out to the center. The move is good for white, the move is good for black. And Paul Morphy brings out his knight to f3 to attack that center pawn, and black brings out the knight to defend it. You've all seen this a lot in your chess club and in your tournaments. Paul Morphy brings out the bishop to c4, attacking the wig pawn here, and black brings out their knight. Both players doing the things that you know. Control the center with the center pawn, bring out your knights and bishops. This is pretty much what a lot of players play. Now you've also seen in the Knight at the Opera that Paul Morphy likes to do this gambit. He likes to bring out his second pawn here, daring white black to take, and black does take. That's the, probably the best move for black. Now what is unusual in this game, and you might not have seen, is that Paul Morphy does not retake the pawn. Instead, he castles his king. Now, castling, we've talked about, is a way to protect your king, but it's not just a way to protect your king. It's also an important way to centralize your rook, to bring out your rook where it can exert its power down the center files. In chess, it's really important to bring your rooks to the center where they can be activated and developed more quickly. So Paul castles, one, two, Scooby-Doo, king is safe, rook is, is coming out. Now, what black notices is that white didn't retake, and they left this pawn undefended. So black comes down, and they take that pawn. Now black is sitting well. They have two pawns. But Paul Morphy develops his rook right here, lines it up with the king, and pins the knight to the king. This is an absolute pin. This knight absolutely cannot move because by the rules of chess, you're not allowed to move into check. So black says, okay, this, this knight is pinned. I better defend it. So I am going to move up my pawn. Moving that pawn protects the knight, attacks this bishop, and releases this bishop here along that diagonal. Black thinks that is a great move. And Paul says, fine, I will take that pawn, attacking both knights and attacking the pinned piece. That knight can't move. So black decides they will capture the bishop. Now if we look at the material, black thinks they're doing great. They have five points and Paul Morphy's only caught a pawn. But Paul Morphy knows that the game is not just about material but about position and what black has done is they have brought their queen out very early which gives Paul Morphy an opportunity to base his attack on attacking two things, on attacking the king and also attacking the queen who's been brought out. So he develops his knight right here. He develops his knight here, forking the queen and the knight. Now remember, the knight cannot move because it's pinned. It's an absolute pin. Well, actually, this pawn is also pinned because the queen and the rook connected, facing down both files, the queen pins this pawn to this queen. That's not an absolute pin. The pawn could take the knight, but then the queen would get the queen. So this knight comes out, Paul Morphy is able to develop with an attack on the pinned knight. So 
Black needs to move their queen. They move it over here to h5, pinning the knight to this queen. Do you see how it's lined up here? So we have this lineup right here with the rook and the knight and the king, and this lineup right here with the queen pinning the knight to the queen. Now, because we've developed this knight, move the queen, Paul Morphy is able to take that knight. Um, he captures the knight, getting close to um, even material. He's still a pawn down. Remember in the very opening, he moved that center pawn in the Scotch Gambit. Okay. <clears throat> so when he took that knight, notice he still got his pieces lined up. Those lined up of pieces allow for a fabulous attack. For example, if Paul Morphy moved his knight here, he would be uncovering a check and attacking the queen, and it would be double check. In double check, the king would have to move. So he's threatening this attack on the queen and double checking the king. His opponent sees that, so they bring out their bishop right here to try to prevent that discovered attack. But the pieces are still lined up. So what Paul Morphy does is he's able to bring his knight over here, and when the knight moves, it uncovers a pin of the bishop, and when the knight moves, it not only pins the bishop, but attacks the pin piece, protected by his own knight. So he protects his own pieces, he uncovers an attack, pinning the bishop, and attacking the bishop at the same time. Pretty nifty attack, I think. So black's in kind of a, a bad shape. So they decide, okay, I can't do anything about that bishop. But what I can do is I can develop my bishop and come down here and I can attack the rook. So this bishop attacks the rook. And so the black is saying, Schufer is saying, if you take my bishop, I will take your rook. But Paul Morphy is pretty clever. So instead of taking with the knight, he takes with the rook and says, check. Well, as you might expect, the pawn takes the rook and the knight takes the pawn. But in taking that pawn, this knight is now threatening two important forks. It's threatening to come here, forking the rook and the queen, or if it doesn't go there, it's threatening to come here, forking the king and the rook. Two big forks. Well, black has a real problem here. So what black does is they move the queen here, okay? So they move the queen where it can protect, um, this, it can protect against this fork, and this now is no longer fork because the queen um, moved. So Paul Morphy now is thinking about that because he still thinks he would really love to do this move. Um, so he decides he's going to come and he's going to attack the queen. Protected, this knight comes up, protects that knight, and attacks the queen. So the queen's kind of going, hmm, I wonder what I should do. I still need to protect. So the queen moves here. Still protecting this, but is now no longer threatened. So now Paul Morphy brings his queen here to e2, lining up, right? So if this knight takes this pawn, forking the king and the rook, if this knight moves, the queen is pinned. That's what this lineup does. It pins this queen to here. So black says, fine, I'll retreat my bishop here. Now my bishop protects that pawn, and the knight cannot go here. But this knight can, and say, check. And the queen cannot take because the queen is pinned. The queen cannot take the queen because the king is in check. 
Okay. So the king goes to d7 to get out of check. Okay. Because the king cannot go here, right? King goes here, d7 to get out of check. And this queen comes here and says, check. I'm just going to double check that I have the same roof. The queen goes to g4 and says, check. Now the king cannot go here, he cannot go here, so he's going to go back to d8. He's going to come back right here, thinking, okay, d8, I'm fine. Well, now this knight comes and says, check. And the queen takes. And now Paul Morphy still has somebody on the back rank, right? So this bishop comes up here and says, check. Now notice, Schroofer's in a bad situation. So because the bishop is checking, the knight is guarding here, the queen is guarding here, and here, the king cannot move. So their only option is to block. Okay, so they have blocked bishop e7. Knight e6, check. Knight e6, check. Queen could take, but if the queen takes, well then black would lose their queen. And they don't want to lose their queen right now because they're under a massive attack. So they want to save their queen. Um, so the king moves to c8. Anybody see another check? It's not just another check. Watch this. Knight to c, knight to, hang on. King c8, knight to c5, a discovered check. Okay, so the queen is checking here and the king moves to b8. Knight comes here and says, check. King can't really move anywhere. King has to go back to c8. Notice that the queen is still lined up here, which is kind of key for this. Knight goes to b6, double check. The knight is checking and the queen is checking, okay? And the king goes back. To b8. And the reason the king doesn't go to d8 right here is because if the king goes to d8 with the knight protecting here, the queen comes down and that would be checkmate. So they know they can't go here, so they go back to b8. And the queen comes down. Check. Now, the king cannot retake because it's guarded by the knight. So they have one chance. They move their rook over, capture the queen, but now do you notice that the king has no space to move? This is the perfect opportunity for a smothered checkmate. And the master of the smothered checkmate is the knight, because the knight cannot be blocked. And so the knight comes here to d7 and says, checkmate. It's a smothered mate which is why this game is called The Smother of Invention. I hope you enjoyed that game and I look forward to seeing you next week.